Okay guys, so welcome along tonight. Um, the topic for tonight is Technique Matters. Um, by me, April 2020. Now the reason I chose the topic Technique Matters for two reasons. Firstly, because technique does matter. It is important. It does make a difference. Um, to the results you get, it makes a difference to how far you progress in the sport as well. Also a little play in words, because Technique Matters and that we're going to be discussing the matters involved with technique, so everything to do with technique in general there. So the first thing, what is technique? Now I had a little think about this earlier today, and I know in my mind what I thought technique was. Then I thought I would look at our old trusty friend, the dictionary. And there were a few definitions within the dictionary under technique, but there was one that I admit I absolutely love. A skillful or efficient way of doing something. Now, the reason I love this definition is because of the two words that are in it, skillful and efficient. I think it epitomizes what we're trying to do, swimming-wise. I think it describes what's important about your technique in swimming because it is your skills and your efficiency that are vital in there. Um, so if you take anything away from today, I want it to be this definition, that your technique is a skillful or efficient way of doing something because that's the two things we're going to look at this evening. So things to remember. Textbook technique is called that because it belongs in the textbook. When we do our coaching courses, we see the books and it talks through the technique. Yes, it's ideal for the person that's in that textbook, but it doesn't mean that it's ideal for you. It's a kind of general consensus sometimes because a lot of times technique is slightly transferable, but there will always be variations in there. So textbook technique, belongs in the textbook. It's important that you remember that one size doesn't fit all. So what works for you won't necessarily work for someone else. The same way in what works for you won't work for your friend. Now this is for a variety of reasons. It comes down to your height, your strength, it comes down to your flexibility and your mobility there. It also comes down to your buoyancy in the water. So all various things that determines which technique works best for you and why it wouldn't specifically work for someone else. Now when we're talking about improving your technique, you've got to remember it's about improving your skills and your efficiency. So you can't look at someone else and just copy them. You've got to think about what your skills are, what you're lacking there and what you need to work on. You also need to look at the efficiency of your stroke and see how we can make it more efficient, okay? So your technique, it's about your skills and your efficiency, no one else's. So how can you get faster? The first way is to reduce resistance. You hear me quite often going on about the importance of streamlining, and I'm gonna show you this little diagram here, okay? So here we have someone swimming freestyle, you can see the hips are quite low, the legs are quite low. So the blue arrows that are coming into his body, that's the resistance. That's where he's hitting the water. That's what's slowing him down. Okay. So the more spread out your body is, be that due to your body position being low in the water like that, or be it because you're entering wider and your legs are kicking apart slightly, which is making you wider, that's going to cause more resistance. So that's why we hammer on about the importance of streamline because you want to have the least resistance possible when you're moving through the water because all resistance doing is slowing you down. You can increase propulsion, okay? So we have a little look at this diagram here. We can see we talk about the high elbow. We talk about making sure that we're connecting with our hand and our forearm. You're wanting your point of contact with the water to be the biggest surface area possible. That's why we talk about using your forearm and your hand because that way you're pushing back all that water there. You're maintaining the pressure 
on that water and you're moving through, okay? So that's how we increase our propulsion, by making sure you've got the largest surface area possible connecting with the water in the most efficient way. So what can you improve? Skills. You hear us talking about skills, you've heard me saying that all skills can be developed and all skills can be improved. Okay, so we're going to look at the different skills that you can improve, which will help ultimately your technique. The first one being streamlining your head and body position. Okay, so again, buoyancy does come into this slightly, as does your body shape. Um, also, your height and your build will affect this as well. But it's important that you get the streamline and the best streamline possible for you. Now, if your head's too high or your head's too low, you're going to be hitting the water there, okay? Um, if your body position is too low down, like the guy in the previous image, again, you're going to be hitting the water there. So that streamlining is vital to make sure that you're moving through the water in the most efficient way possible. Your entry, and I've put and or catch. The reason I've put and or catch is because unless you do an over the top recovery and breaststroke, you don't enter the water on breaststroke, okay? You enter on butterfly, you enter on back crawl, and you enter on front crawl, okay? However, there is a catch in all four strokes. Now, when I talk about your entry, if you're slapping the water, and when you enter the water, what you're doing is you're moving the water. It is a lot harder to get a good catch in the water when you're working with moving water. It means that you're then flailing about trying to feel for still water and you've missed a vital chance to get a good early catch. So it's important that we place our hands in the water rather than slapping them in. That entry will determine how good a catch you get and how early your catch is. The best swimmers we see get the catch pretty much almost instantaneously when they get into the water. Some people, they slip through at the start and they're not catching until further through the stroke. It's important that we get you catching as early as you can. That's why we do a lot of skull on our front, with our arms out in front. So we're working on where we catch the water on our butterfly, on our breaststroke, on our front crawl. Why we do sculling on our back, again, with our arms extended, because we're working where we catch that water upon entry for our back crawl. Your feel for the water, which is where your sculling comes in there, okay? Some people get a good catch, but then they might slip on the way through their pool. So it's important that you feel that water all the way through, that you maintain that pressure from the minute you get your catch at the start of your stroke, all the way to, th to the end of your stroke, okay? So it's important that you maintain the pressure, that you have good feel for the water. That's why we do sculling in different positions, why we do the windscreen wiper skull when we're doing breaststroke, why we practice our skull at the end of our stroke as well. It's important that you practice feeling the pressure of the water at every stage in your stroke for each of the individual strokes. Your kick. Kick is something when we get a kickboard, a lot of people think it's a social kick in time for a chat. However, if you look at the best swimmers in the world, you will find they all have one thing in common. They're all brilliant at kick. It makes a difference to your propulsion. It makes a difference to your body position. It also makes a difference to how much energy you use whilst you're kicking. So how much energy you can then maintain for everything else. Kick is important. It's probably something we don't do enough of in our sessions. It is something I will be looking to do more of. But if you can develop your kick, so if your ankles are quite stiff and you've not got the flexibility there, there are exercises you can do away from the pool. If you need help with that, come and see me. We'll give you some exercises to do. Um, again, kick vital and breaststroke vital for your underwater, for your dolphin kick there as well. Okay, so kick, a very important skill and something that we can work on and we can develop. Starts, turns, and underwater. Okay. So recently, when we've been doing our land stuff, we've been doing a lot of squat jumps, single leg squat jumps, um, be that vertical, or trying to get as far as you can. These are vital for that initial propulsion that you get from the start, be that a back crawl start or a dive. 
okay you're really using your legs to explode off those blocks so you need that propulsion there so it is important that we do our work away from the water to help develop that it is important that every time you enter the pool at the start of a session that you do the best start you possibly can because if you do that every session that adds up over a week if you do that over the month that adds up and that is improving your starts because you're getting a quality one at the start when you're fresh and you have the energy to really get that propulsion in there. Turns is something we say we like to practice in training. You like a starch and turn session. Turns is something you should be nailing every time you approach that wall. I say to you that we need to train the way you want to race. If you do lazy turns, so if you approach the wall sluggishly, if you don't get your feet over or under quick enough, depending upon which type of turn you're doing, if you don't plant your feet firmly in the wall, then get that good momentum off the wall into that tight streamline, you're doing yourself a disservice, okay? We don't practice till we get it right, we practice till we can't get it wrong. So if all your muscles know, if all your body knows is how to do fast turns and quality turns, that's what's going to transfer over into a race. You see the elite swimmers, they're looking for the smallest, minute things that they can improve. Turns is something they're keeping as low as they can. They're keeping it as fast as they can with their feet over. When they're bringing their feet up underneath, when it's breaststroke and butterfly turns, they are pointing their toes to reduce that re resistance. There's lots of little tweaks you can do there, but it's important that you practice quality turns. Your underwater work. If you're only coming up at five metres in training, you're probably going to come up about three metres in a race. Okay, so it's important that you practice your underwater off every wall in training and off your starts. Okay, so every time you push off that wall at the start, make sure we are working that underwater in training. Efficiency. Okay, so we're coming back to the definition at the start. We had skillful and efficient. Okay, so that's the two things we're looking at. Now, a lot of the things that are mentioned in skills transfer over into the efficiency. So distance per stroke. Okay, so you're wanting to get as far from each stroke as you possibly can, making it the most efficient stroke that you can. Okay, so here that will come, the streamlining will come in to make sure we're reducing the resistance. Where you enter and catch will come in to make sure that you're maximising that at the start. How you maintain the pressure in the water and finish your stroke off, again, that comes into distance per stroke. Okay, a lot of people, if they're doing front crawl, they finish the stroke short. It's important that you finish it all the way back. The more you practice that in training, the better that will stand you in good stead in the future. It's easy to up your stroke rate. It's harder to go back and learn distance per stroke. So it's important we get that right from the start. Recovery. Sometimes we're a bit too tense. Okay, you've got to remember when you're swimming, when your arms are under the water and working, that's the propulsive phase. That's where the power has really got to be on. But they need that recovery. So in breaststroke, it's as your hands come forward. That's the recovery in breaststroke. Every other stroke, it's as your arms are out the water and coming round. Okay, it's important that they're relaxed. A, because tension will affect your entire stroke if you're too tense there. B, because if you're tense, you're using energy that you can't afford to spare. And C, because, did I do A, B, C? Do I want to? <laughs> C, um, because if you're nice and relaxed, then you're relaxed on the entry as well. Okay, so you're saving that energy when you're relaxed and around the recovery to make sure we're really getting that power on underneath the water. Distance off the walls. Okay, this is under efficiency because at your age and your size, 15 metres underwater is not efficient for you. Okay, that's too far. But, we need to practice you getting the ultimate thing. So the what's best for you distance-wise, for speed-wise as well, and work on that. Yes, in training, you can practice going further because it will stand you in good stead later on. But it's about getting the right distance for you. So making sure that you are getting that good connection with the wall, that we are getting that push off. What I'd like to see, the first four weeks that we're back in the pool, I want to see every time you approach the wall and turn, I want to just pushing and gliding and just trying to get out past the flags off that glide to make sure we're getting that good initial contact with the wall. Once we've done that for four weeks, then we'll bring in the underwater phase for breaststroke, we'll bring in the dolphin kicks. 
um, for your other strokes there, but distance off the walls. You find best swimmers tend to be good off the walls. If you're good off your walls and efficient round about your walls, the less distance you're having to swim. Okay, so you're saving your energy for your swim because you're working your distance there, getting a good push off. The walls are your best friends, so they say. Minimising resistance. Okay, this is all about part of efficiency. So again, this is the streamlining, the head and body position, making sure we're not entering too wide, making sure we're not, our kick's not too wide. Minimising that resistance. That will improve the efficiency of your technique. And yet maximising the propulsion. So we talked about that, with maximising the surface area. It's all about getting that early catch, making sure we're not moving the water with our entry, making sure we're maintaining the pressure throughout our entire stroke there, guys, and finish also we're maximising that propulsion. We can build up our strength on land, and then that can help transfer, transfer into the pool as well. Technique is always a work in progress. No one ever says, that's it, my technique's perfect, I'm done, and it stays like that. There's always something that can be improved, and technique is always evolving. Okay, so it's important that you remember, technique is fluid. It's not fixed and constant. It will change, and it should change. Technique changes as we grow and develop. So as your body shape changes, as your height changes suddenly, your arms are longer, so they're entering in a completely different place. You've maybe got strength that you didn't have before. And these things take over, your body position will change, your buoyancy might change in the water as well. So technique does change and we need to learn to adapt to that so as we maximize our strengths, okay? So it will change as we grow and develop. It also changes due to scientific research. So whereas 20 odd years ago we were taught S-shaped pools, that's not happening now. Okay, so as science changes as well, technique will change there as we learn to do things better. Technique can always be improved. There's always something. Um, I've told you before, the elite athletes, they're analysing every single little detail to see where they can make the most minute changes. I know a lot of us, when we do our turns, our brush and butterfly turns, do you point your toes as you bring your knees under? Probably not. Is that something we should be doing? Absolutely yes, because it's minimising that resistance in the water. Okay, so it's your technique, your skills, they can always be improved, and it's important that you never stop looking for those improvements. The minute you stop looking for improvements is the minute you stand still and everyone else will pass you. Okay, it's important that you're always looking for things to improve and that we're always making those adjustments, be that from feedback from the coach, from looking through videos, or even as you get older, you'll maybe feel slight changes yourself. Taking ownership. The coach can tell you what to do, the coach can show you what to do, but the coach can't do it for you. It's important that you take ownership. So it's important that you're making sure your technique is your priority in your training sessions. It's important that you take responsibility for nailing every single turn. It's important that you take ownership for that underwater phase of the walls and that dolphin kick. If you take ownership, if you take responsibility, that's when magnificent things can happen. That's when you'll see the real changes and the real improvements happening. Your coach can't be there 24 hours a day, breathing down your neck, making sure you're getting it right. The elite athletes, they take ownership, they take responsibility. That's one of the best life skills you can learn. And again, be the best version of you. It's not about trying to copy anyone or trying to mimic anyone, but it's being the best that you can be. Maximising your strengths and seeing how we can minimise your weaknesses there, so how we can work round about them or how we can improve and strengthen the parts that you're weaker at. Okay, so it's about improving the overall version of you, but most importantly, being the best version of you guys. Not comparing your technique to anybody else's, not trying to copy anyone else, making your technique more efficient, building on your strengths. 